Today's a very exciting day. We're gonna be unboxing the Logitech Direct Drive Pro Wheel and the Pro Pedals. This is some of the best sim racing equipment you can get. It's also some of the most accessible sim racing you can do through this because it works on both PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. I've got Nathan here, who's a very, very fast sim racer. We're gonna give you our honest first impressions of this. So let's open up. We think this one is the wheel. I should have got some scissors ready. There's a key. Um, Nathan's got a key. And we're gonna open this one up. I'm really, really, really excited for this, I have to say. We've both used um, Fanatec uh, products before. Ooh, okay. Obviously Logitech make the G29, which is an absolute classic. Interesting, it's all PlayStation oh, yeah. branded. Uh, how Officially we... licensed PlayStation product. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Can we squeak? Mm -hmm. It's coming out. <laughs> hey, let's put it sideways. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see this on other channels. This is this is a real unboxing. There we go. Whoa. Okay. So basically. It looks like an official PlayStation thing, doesn't it? PlayStation it does. Blue, licensed PlayStation. Which is obviously great for me, great for us. We do a lot of, and have done a lot of Gran Turismo. That so, looks good. Place to win, yeah. Lord Set Press, quite a big box. The last thing I reviewed in terms of uh, wheels was the Moser R5. That thing only works on PC and is tiny. <laughs> I get the feeling this is not gonna be as small as the Moser no. R5, but let's no. see. Let's open it up. Okay. I think they've, these companies, they've tried to make their boxes a lot more of an event now. Yeah. <laughs> Fanatec, you've got loads of things coming up. This one is, is a bit more Well, we've just, we've, we've just gone from PlayStation and now we've gone to McLaren. If you have a look here, it's gone from all blue to all black. It's like mm. a layered thing. McLaren with so Logitech. It looks like some sort of McLaren Logitech yeah. collaboration. Well, we know that Logitech are partnered with McLaren to do the Logitech G Challenge, mm -hmm. which by the way, if you subscribe to this channel, you get an opportunity to win one of these, but that's coming later. Don't want to give too many secrets away. So here we go. Oh, so it says pro on the front. It's great to feel like a pro. And on the back. Oh my. Is, um, this is like Egyptian hieroglyphics. Say, so, PS5, PS4, like PC. A quick release? Yep. So that's how to get it on. This is what we've got in here, isn't it? So we've got the rim, we've got the wheelbase, we've got a clamp, we've got a presumably USB, mm -hmm. and we've got a power cable. Um, it's saying do this, don't do that. Oh, don't put it on a curved table, I'm guessing. Yeah, flat, well, a flat edged table. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Not a curved edged table. Um, this is on a, that looks like a play seat. Mm -hmm. Evolution or something, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that's really sad that we know that. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the length of the M6 screw, isn't it? So it's a bit of algebra here. Can you see that? L equals T plus fifteen millimeters. So I... L is your T is your table, I guess. Oh yeah. Uh, you got that quicker than I did. L. No, L must be Logitech. Have you seen this before? No, I haven't. Honestly, I haven't. I just. I remember doing algebra, I didn't really like it. T is table, L is Logitech. So equal to your tape. Take your table and add 15 mil to the M6 bolt and that's what you need. Okay. The okay. thing that I don't often understand here, is it dangerous to go more? Because sometimes you can, Fanatec I, I find you really don't need a lot of no. length in it. So we'll find that. Hopefully. I mean, they should have what M6 bolts need. in here. Yeah, yeah. If not, we have M6 bolts, but we'll see. There's a pro button there. Power, we know what to do. That's a quick release, we'll come onto it. And this is PlayStation PC. Interestingly, it doesn't say Xbox, although I thought this does work with Xbox, I might have to double check. Ooh, um, I doubt it. We'll if have to see. PlayStation, officially yeah, licensed. Maybe I got right? that wrong. I'll com confirm in the video, but PS5, PS4, and PC definitely here. And this is an interesting thing. They have this rotary wheel I've seen. Oh, yeah. That I wonder what that's for. It just is pointing it out that it exists. Mm. <laughs> and then saying download G-Hub. Right, okay. We'll put that down there. I know that we'll come back to it. So we've Not got- this. Yeah. I don't know what this is. It says play to win. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, so we've got stickers, one sticker, safety compliance and warranty information. So that must be all of the legal stuff. Yeah. That, to be honest, I mean, let us know in the comments if you read that. Then if you do, you're an absolute hero. But I'll I tell think... you what I usually do. Yeah. <laughs> I usually put it back inside. Very nice. And never touch it again. <laughs> nice. Well, that wasn't the experience. But let's go on something that we do want to see and we are going to use, which is going to be the rim. And I'm going to feel the triggers first. And okay. it's very interesting. I've been trying a lot of rims recently. Obviously, I use the Fanatec McLaren V3. Do you, have you used that one as well? I've, I have used that one, yeah. Very heavy. Yeah. Yeah. triggers now the um, Fanatec P1 rim very si they're silent triggers you can't hear them they're mushy okay. the Moser if you want to click a Moser R5 trigger very clicky very high pitched and on my um, CSL F1 eSports rim there's no resistance but there's a very light click there is a click yeah, yeah. it's like hair, tr hair trigger yeah. on but this is probably the quietest trigger I've heard so this one it does make a sound but it feels almost Magn it, they must be magnetic actually, I can feel something, so I why don't actually, we... There are more triggers on the back actually. Wow, okay. So those, yep, those are your main shifters. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, clutch and... Clutch ones. Nice. Nice. And there's, there's, it's like just on a spring, there's no clickiness yeah, or crunchiness to it. Yeah, we wouldn't expect it. in the clutch, so... Okay. Interesting. Okay, that's not something you get Should on... Should we have a look at it? Yeah, let's have a look. That was like a car unveiling, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what do we think? So obviously you can tell, it, immediately I look at this and I kind of, it harks back to like G29. That's this Logitech logo in the middle and also kind of the rotaries, but it obviously is way more premium. I mm, mean, mm. I'm trying to see what to compare it to. It's, it's so- This does feel nice. It's so matte black, isn't it as well? Yeah, yeah. So- Maybe you want to have a look at how it, it looks. It looks like we've got Funky switch, as they call it. Yeah. Obviously, the PlayStation buttons. Uh, this is that rotary thing that they highlighted. Interestingly, it's not um, symmetrical. Ooh, that's got a bit of a button to so it as well. As well. Oh, so is that one. Okay. Yeah. That's quite a lot of, and these one I think might rotate as well. I'm not sure. If that. I don't know actually. No, no, probably really, these ones. No. Does that click in as well? Okay, nice. So yeah. Looks like they've got a lot of. Uh, options to get a lot of settings. And clearly like efficiently PlayStation. So if you want to plug and play this on the PlayStation, no issues, all your buttons are going to mean what they mean. Mm. On the PC rim, like the Moza, they're all like one, two, three, four, five, and you have to map them. So mm. if you're used mm. to the PlayStation layout, that's going to be great. It's not as heavy as some of the Fanatec ones. Yeah. On its own. Like some, I think my, my eSports one, I can't really hold it up like that for a long time. Yeah. But this, I mean, it's very well equipped. There's a lot of buttons on there. So the, the shape of it, I used a GT rim. Mm -hmm. And when I went karting today, I was also on like a GT rim. This is not circular, obviously. It's got this bit at the bottom. But this reminds me of like a nice road car rim, basically, which is an mm. interesting thing to go with. Mm. Um, now oh. if, if you're doing something like rallying, obviously, it could be fine. General touring cars. You use a formula rim normally. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be really interesting whether you feel at home on this mm. room because it's got mm. obviously all the stuff around it. Mm. And it oh. looks like we've got an LED indicator or some indicator at the top, so it'll be interesting to see kind of how mm. effective I don't know if that's that is. LED, you know? I don't think it is. Okay, maybe not. So I think it's like some of these cars have a central... Just uh, to know where it is. Yeah, like a different color something yeah. in the central, so you What's can... that thing on the back of it? Oh, it's a screw. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and a that's... quick release, wow. Yeah. Now, Ooh, how does that feel? The quick, I find in wheel rims, the quick release is where you really feel like how premium the rim is, right? Yeah. Well, this seems that once you pull it back, yeah. it can't retract again until it's probably on the base. Oh, okay. okay. Seems to have locked in that position there. Yeah. It looks like the least amount of pins I've seen. I think the Fanatec wow. one's got about nine. So that only has four pins. The Mosa had loads of pins. So the pin, if you don't know what we're talking about, those pins basically connect what you're pressing and all the input on the wheel mm. through the wheelbase onto your platform. Now, Fanatec have a lot of kind of strands. Yeah. And one downside is that they can snap. And I haven't yeah. known people who snap them. Yeah. Now, it's interesting they've managed to do that with only four. So maybe they the bandwidth or something. look very, very bulletproof. Yeah. Very, very tough. I don't think you'd ever have a problem with that breaking or... I've seen sometimes they get pushed in. Yeah. Yeah. which is 
a total so nightmare. if you don't quite get it in the right hole, it will just push it in and it's broken. Yeah, that um, looks very, very robust. Yeah, the, the quick release is really important because how secure you feel your quick release, I think just makes you more comfortable with the whole setup. Mm. And if you don't feel comfortable with your quick release, then there's no point having removable rims and whatnot. Yep. All right, Good okay. Product. So. Looks like there's something under there. Ooh. Okay. Hiding under the warranty, this is the wheelbase. This is, on any one of these systems, this is where really, this it's down to this how good the setup is gonna be, basically. So I'm really, 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 really excited to, um, to see this. That is where all the magic happens. Yeah. And this one is heavy. Oh, is it? This is, oh my word, this is heavy. I'll hand over to you. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. That, that is, is yep. solid. Yep, that is heavy. How many kilos did it say the box was? I don't know. Okay, that is very heavy. That is heavy. That is heavy. But again, confidence inspiring, know that yeah. you've got possibly a big powerful motor in there. Yeah. Well, this is more, I mean, that this is quite significantly more powerful than example for the Moser R5 mm -hmm. or my CSLE. And it does stand to reason he's doing a big motor in that. I want to see this thing. This is a real unboxing. Ooh. That is a very interesting design. So that's the grill presumably for the fat for, for venting, I would presume, right? Because it's perforated. Yeah. So we've got a start stop, which is pleasant to see. Now, one criticism I will make of my Moser R5 is that, as I was saying to Nathan earlier, the power button is so inconsequential. And I feel like it, when you've got a DD with power, it's really important. You know that, so they haven't skimped on that. And it's amazing how sim racing equipment has just come on recently. Mm. Like I started on like Thrustmaster equipment. Absolutely love Thrustmaster stuff, but it's very plasticky, like toy-like. I mean, this is like different grade, mm. absolutely different grade. Looks like there's a nice screen at the top there. Ah, yes. Interesting how visible that's going to be when you've got mm. the rim on. Mm. Well, you've, got the, you've got the LEDs there, haven't you, for the thing. And yeah, that might be oh, yeah. number four speed and, and gear and stuff like that. Is that another button than that one? Oh yeah, there's another button there. Okay. I wonder if that will cycle through. No, it does. It looks and feels like a good premium product. Yeah. It's got a tree force on the back we'll find out and more, definitely more venting out the bat. I mean, that mm. is almost, we can take this plastic off because we're going to, we're going to be using it. That's definitely a lot of airflow. Is that actually a fan there? Looks yeah, like that is the fan. fan. So the fan is going to vent. So sorry, it's not going to vent out the front, I guess. It's going to vent out the back. It might draw an air out the front. But that is a huge venting area. Yeah. Interesting that A, they need it, and B, they're giving it that much space. Yeah. To be honest, I like this design as well. See how the PS4 yeah. angled at the back? Yeah. So that you can't butt it up to a flat surface yeah. and stop the air coming out. Yeah. I think they've done something like that so here. Even if you have this on the back, they're still going to have this yeah. in the air. Yeah. yeah, even if you've got something going like that, yeah. that is still quite a gap to get the air out. Yeah. It's a problem that I had with my PS3 actually. Yeah. The air used to come out the side. Yeah. But once I butted it up to the side of the Nowhere shelf to go. and it overheated. So I had on my Thrustmaster T150. I don't know if you remember, but it always used to overheat. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. because they yeah. just didn't, they didn't think enough about ventilation. But this one, obviously, it's almost, it seems to be such a, it's almost like an exhaust. Like this wouldn't look out of place on the back of a Lamborghini as an exhaust. <laughs> Honestly, wouldn't, right? It feels like the whole thing is designed like that, which is, yeah. um, <laughs> which is great. Now, what we've got for UI, we've got the power, is that a USB? That's a micro USB there, which is a bit weird, I mm -hmm. think. That's kind of old school. Mm -hmm. But then we have three... Um, USB A ports, and I'm looking for the power port. I need to, might need to. Oh, so just one on the right. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Okay, so it's tiny. So we've got a tiny that'll be a, a DC power port, and that's what we got. So we've got three USBs. So we got, we think one for PC, mm -hmm. and then one for pedals, mm -hmm. one for shifter possibly. Yeah. Um, yeah, this thing is this thing is solid though. This thing is a heavy thing. Oh, yeah. It's solid. So yeah. You're gonna feel like when you bought it that you've actually got a proper piece of equipment. Yeah. You've got a good product here. I wonder how much this actually weighs, because... Yeah. We'll find out. We'll put it yeah. in the video now. And we'll, we'll do some comparisons as well. We think about these kind of holes here, right? It's interesting, isn't it? I don't know. It just looks like a... I don't know. I don't think they serve any purpose, but... I I'll, think... Yeah. I think... Instead of having... Because it's getting a bit heavy now. <laughs> instead of having the mounts there... Yeah. It's probably oh, have a bit more stability it. to have them out here. Yeah. 
and I think this is designed to allow you to bud it up yeah. to a flat surface. Must be, and then have that. Because these they don't move, they don't fold down or anything. Yeah, so that kind of goes over the lip, right? Yeah. Let's have a look at the mounting. We got one, two, three, which is common in that triangle shape. Um, and we'll see, we'll, we'll, hopefully this is going to fit directly onto uh, my GT Mega Prime. We'll see, mm. we'll just check the wheel stand as well and see if it uh, fits there, if it's kind of standard. I don't know whether this is Logitech standard or not, to be honest, but we'll find out. Um, and it's, if you care about this stuff, it's got the it's got UK markings as well, which is interesting. So it's like being a pretty specific for UK market. I'm guessing what we're going to have here is the power brick. Always interesting to see how big that is. And this is definitely a chunky boy. This reminds me of Xbox 360. Do you know what? The Fanatec one's the same size as that. Yeah. So we've got a fairly standard power brick here with a kettle lead. Just yep. something I'm very interested in as an electrician. Yeah. This wheel can draw 6.25 amps. That is quite, quite a, lot. a lot. Yeah. That is quite a lot. I don't know how that translates to electricity usage or but We'll see. What it seems it yeah. seems like it's taking a lot of power, so the detail should be I mean the detail and the force should be it's, really, really good. It's definitely unlike say I don't want to be too harsh on like Logic G29 or you know T150 stuff like that, but they're definitely sort of toy grade ish. Yeah. This is yeah. this is like this feel. You can tell it feels serious. Even just a big red start stop at the front. <laughs> this is not something that I would you know if I <laughs> you give to a kid and they can just you know no supervision. This is like no. serious. I think. No, no. Um, but I'm excited. So we got two. Ke interesting. We got an EU one and we got a three pin um, UK kettle lead as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing this is going to be the solitary... Ah, okay, this is the micro USB to USB-A. So I wonder if this one goes to the PC. Possibly. Micro USB now. Yeah. I will say, I really wish this was USB-C because yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have a lot of USB-C cables now. So that's interesting that this may have been designed for such a long time that the time they came up with it, micro USB was still a standard, but good to know. Right, should we put this? I'm. Um, this thing is so heavy. I was yeah, my arms are starting to hurt. Should we to put be it honest. on the? We'll put it on there, maybe. Might be a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please, please, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's only thanks to your support we can actually do stuff like this. So please, if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. Let me in the comments. I'm gonna put Nathan's channel in the description as well. Go check Nathan's channel out for lots of karting at the moment, but also really fast in ACC. And we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with Logitech coming up in the very near future. Um, on the Logitech G Challenge with McLaren, and that's going to allow you to win one of these win uh, things, an amazing setup. So make sure you're part of the community for that. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.